Hey y'all, it's Lola the Manager, your new favorite project manager, tech junkie, and entrepreneur. This is episode four of Life as a Project Manager. If you're new here, this is a series dedicated to what it's like being a project manager and all the things that you need to know. Every week, a new video will be dropping. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments, but be sure to hit that subscribe and notification button so you know every time I drop a new video. Let's get into it. So in today's video, we're going to focus on helpful certifications for aspiring project managers. So the first basic entry-level type certification in the project management field is the CAPM. C-A-P-M, which stands for Certified Associate in Project Management. This is considered an entry-level certification because there is no experience required to go after this certification. All you need to do is take some type of project management education or training course that adds up to 23 hours. You can find information on this specific certification on the Project Management Institute PMI website. If you are a non-member of the PMI, this certification will cost you $300. And if you are a member of the PMI, it'll only cost you $225. This exam has 150 questions and it's three hours long. Now, in order to maintain this certification after you get it, you'll be required to take 15 professional development units, also known as PDUs, you renew it every three years with those PDUs. So it's currently 2024. If you get your CAPM, you will have to renew it in 2027. And in the next three years, 2024, 25, 26, and then of course 27, it would be expected that you're getting at least a total of 15 PDUs in order for you to renew. And of course, nothing comes cheap. The price for the renewal is $60 for members, $150 for non-members. So this is a very basic project management certification. If I were to do project management all over, this is something that I may consider if I didn't have experience. You can utilize this to help make you more marketable in the project management world so you can get more entry level projects that don't need someone that has a vast amount of experience. So then this will allow you to gain a few years experience and then you can move up to the next certification on this list which is the PMP. The PMP stands for Project Management Professional. Now the requirements for this certification is completely different than the CAPA. If you have a bachelor's degree already you need 36 months of project management experience in order to apply for this exam. If you only have your high school diploma or GED, you need 60 months of project management experience in order to apply for this exam. So that means if you have a degree, you only need three years of experience. And if you don't have a degree, you need five years of experience. On top of the actual project management experience, you're also going to need some educational training or background in project management that totals to 35 hours minimum. And baby, it is not cheap. Okay, remember this is all housed under the PMI. If you are not a PMI member, this will cost you $575. And if you are a member, it'll only run you $405. There are 180 questions on the PMP exam and it lasts about three hours long. And as far as maintenance for this certification you need to complete a total of 60 PDUs you need to renew every three years and of course you're not renewing for free $60 for members $150 for non-members and then lastly another certification that has been making its way through the project management world is the certified scrum master also known as CSM this has a very low barrier of entry you have the option of receiving 14 to 16 hours of training by a certified scrum trainer or you receive 25 hours of training by a certified agile coach. Now, when it comes to the cost, it truly varies because it's really based off of where you go get this certification from. People that I know, they utilize a platform called Scrum Alliance, and I believe Scrum Alliance is the one that came up with CSM, but there are other platforms that provide the same type of certification as a CSM, and it costs different. And one of the reasons why the cost varies is because there's different trainers, and different trainers charge different rates for the type of training that they're gonna provide you in order for you to pass that certification exam. This exam is only only 50 questions long and I was doing some research and I could not find out the actual length of the exam as far as hours. I'm going to guess and say two hours max for 50 questions. And then when it comes to maintenance, 
you need to complete 20 hours of SEUs, which is Scrum Education Units. And then you have to renew every two years. And of course, the administrative fee for that would be $100. Now, I just said a lot about these three different certifications. I told you about the CAPM, I told you about the PMP, I told you about the CSM. I want to start this off by saying none of those certifications are required in order to get a job as a project manager. I know tons of project managers with no certifications behind their name. The reason why I talk about certifications is because I think that we need to make ourselves more marketable, allow us to stand out more. And so certifications can help that, but they're not the end all be all. It's not enough to just be certified, but it does show that you know the educational backing. You understand how this industry works, how this work works. Now, those are specific project management certifications. In this next section, I'm going to talk about software certifications. Now, I've had the opportunity to work in IT project management and in marketing project management. I get exposed to so many different tools, so many different language that I always want to make sure that one, I understand what's going on. I serve as the liaison among a lot of people. And so if I can understand certain things, it'll help better how I liaise between all these folks. Now, I personally have the PMP certification. I took the exam. October 2022 and I passed with flying colors. There are three domains on that exam and I passed above target in each domain, which is pretty much the highest you can get on the exam. The number one reason I pursued the PMP is because of how marketable it makes you. The PMP is one of those certifications that is recognized globally, whether the employer is in New York, in Canada, in Australia, in Mexico, in the Philippines, in India, they all know what PMP is. The reason why I say it's globally recognized because if you think about something like a lawyer, a lawyer is able to practice law because they passed a bar exam, but they didn't pass a global bar exam. They passed a bar exam for one specific state and they're able to practice in that one specific state. Whereas something like the PMP allows me to practice globally anywhere. And project management is an industry in which it's never going out of style. I believe it'll get modified as time changes, meaning you'll need to be more agile versus predictive. And I'll create a video about that later down the line. I would say my journey with the PMP was a total of six weeks. I started with the Google Project Management Certification. It's a total of six courses that are provided via Course Era. The first five courses are breaking down the fundamentals and the foundations of project management and what you would be doing in your everyday life as a project manager. And then you end up in your last course, which is a capstone, where now everything that you learned in courses one through five, now you get to apply it in the capstone. The Google Project Management Certification course, it's supposed to take you up to nine months to complete working at your own pace. I think that if you do about 10 hours a week, you should be done within nine to 10 months. When I started it, I just finished a contract. So now I had a lot of free time. So I was spending upwards to 10, 12 hours a day for a total of three weeks to finish all these courses like I was locked in after I completed it I realized I don't think I'm ready for the test because what I learned in the course and what I'm seeing on the PMI's website for the domains and things I should know in order to take this test there was a disconnect so then I went to everybody's favorite place Reddit and I looked through the forums to kind of see what people are saying about project management, the PMP certifications, any type of tips and tricks that I could get. One name was very prevalent and it was Andrew Ramdial. And I hope I say his name correctly. I don't know if it's Ramdial or Ramadal, but I have his name on the screen. He was someone that everyone said, you need to take his course on Udemy. Everyone was saying take his course because it does a really good job of breaking down the test not project management. It tells you about all the head knowledge of project management, but it's telling you the head knowledge that you need in order to pass the test. And that's the difference between taking Andrew's course and taking Google Project Management. I felt like Google Project Management prepared me to go to work tomorrow, 
but it didn't prepare me for this test. So just wanted to put that out there. Andrew's course is about 35 hours and you can actually use it as one of the prerequisites for the project management certification. He did like an extremely good job in breaking down the mindset that you need going into the exam. He was talking about how like one of the reasons why people tend to fail this exam is because they're going in as a project manager and they're not going in as someone that studied for this specific test and is going to answer the questions based off of what this test wants. When you're doing projects, you come up with different solutions and different ways of doing things. That's fine. On the test, there's a specific way they want things done and that's how you have to answer it. So I think he did a really good job in breaking that down and equipping you to pass that exam. One of the other things that he has is a exam simulator. There are so many practice exams online. There are so many different simulators online his simulator is what i saw to be a borderline replica of the exam now i'm not saying that it's the exact same thing i'm saying it's giving spider-man meme is me looking at drake but what i can say is he has a free version of the simulator that has 10 questions after I completed the 35 hours, I took the simulator. And the free one let me know that I was on track to do well. When I did the actual simulator, the actual simulator mimics how the exam is structured. So the exam is structured in different sections. Like there's three segments because you get two breaks. And so he had it set up like that. I believe if you scored about like 70% on those simulations, then that means you're gonna do really well on the exam. And that's just my interpretation of it. No guarantee, but you are highly likely to do better. This is what I gathered from what everybody was saying on and then what actually happened for me when I took the exam. And another thing that I utilize is on YouTube, there is a video, it's like six hours long, it's called 200 Agile Questions. And I can't remember his name, I believe it's Richard McLaughlin. Forgive me if I say it incorrectly, but I'll have it on the screen. I watched his video. Yes, the video is six hours long, I only watched an hour and a half. He sits there and goes through Agile Questions. He breaks down the different answer choices, like how could this potentially be the answer and if it's not going to potentially be the answer why not breaks that down and helps you get into the mind frame of how to assess and break down the questions that you're reading on the exam i did an hour and a half of his video because i got all those right in the first hour and a half which let me know that I was on the right track to take the exam. So between Andrew's course, Richard's video, and the simulation, I did this about three weeks. And then the three weeks before that was the Google Project Management course that I was taking. So I did that in three weeks. So that makes a total of six weeks preparing for this exam. Take all of it with a grain of salt. I will say that when I took this exam, this was a new format from what I've been told. People said that previous exams, were predictive they had formulas they have different things like that my exam it was more agile it wasn't as predictive there weren't many formulas if any at all because I don't recall there being any on there but I felt like everything that I did thoroughly prepared me for the exam so if you plan to pursue that PMP Mwah. Good luck. Now I wanna spend this segment of this video talking about software certifications that you may wanna consider as a project manager. As I stated before, I am a big advocate for making yourself more marketable. And so getting certifications in these different types of softwares makes you more appealing to certain employers because they know that you have a baseline understanding of how this software works. And now you can go ahead and apply it in their workplace. Right? So one of the softwares that I hear a lot about in the IT world, but not necessarily at the companies in which I worked for is Salesforce. Salesforce is a CRM. CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management System. In other words, it's a big computer program that businesses utilize to kind of house all their sales and customer information. There are different types of Salesforce certifications. I'm not gonna sit here and go through all of that, but I believe that as a project manager, if you have some type of entry level basic understanding of this system, you may be able to go and work on those type of projects or work for companies that want someone with a Salesforce background. For instance, I'm currently working as an 
IT project manager. And one of the projects that I was assigned was Salesforce. I don't even know what is gonna happen, but I would have loved if I had got like a crash course in Salesforce before now I have to start this project. Another software that I hear a lot about is ServiceNow. It's a cloud-based platform that allows organizations to automate and consolidate a lot of different requests that come through the company. It allows you to house like the IT stuff, the HR stuff, all the workflows, all the services, all the requests, all of it will be housed in ServiceNow. I just told y'all that I currently have an IT project manager contract that I'm working and the platform that we utilize to manage our projects is ServiceNow. So guess who's over there in the system trying to learn how this works? You already know I'm probably gonna get one of those certifications soon. Another certification is ITIL. ITIL stands for IT Infrastructure Library. ITIL recommends like best practices for IT service management, which is another thing that you can get certified in too. It allows you to pretty much provide support to different processes and stages in the IT life cycle. The way that I define it is this makes me more marketable as an IT project manager because I understand IT service management and this certification kind of puts me in the IT world. I had opportunity to work a contract in which I was part of the IT infrastructure department. We were working on an infrastructure project. I believe if I had the ITIL certification, I could have contributed more to the team, but also I could have gotten a pay raise because now I feel like an expert in this. You feel me? Another one, which is very entry level is AWS Cloud Practitioner. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. It's a cloud computing platform that provides companies with like a wide range of IT infrastructure and application services via the internet. So in other words, think of AWS as like this big library. And we know how like in libraries, in a standard library, you can check out books, you can utilize computers, you, you can probably rent one of those little rooms so you can have some quiet group work time. Like that's, that's what you would experience in a library. So with AWS, it's like this big library that these companies can get access to and they can check out different things that they need in order to build their websites, their apps, and their different things that they do. So this library, this cloud computing platform, it has computers, it has storage rooms for data, it has tools for analyzing information and a lot of other stuff. And so that's kind of like an overview of AWS. And if you are an AWSer and I'm off track, please comment, let me know what's up. Each one teach one, let's educate each other. But that's my interpretation of what AWS is. And so with this certification, this is like a very bare bones entry level breakdown of the cloud. As you guys can see, we no longer use those big old computers that housed all of our information in this big old book. Now it's in a cloud. We don't need a big device. We just have it in the cloud. AWS allows you to understand it at a deeper level. There's a lot of certifications. And so I feel like if you don't have like a tech background, this can be a great way to kind of get into that. So you can understand a few things in which we do with the cloud. I feel like borderline everything runs on the cloud and a lot of organizations and enterprises utilize AWS. So get in where you fit in. In the same token, there's another software that is literally identical to AWS known as Microsoft Azure. I'm not gonna break down Microsoft Azure because the way that I learn it is it's pretty much the same thing as AWS, it's just a different company. And there's probably like a few other differences. Now this IT project management contract that I'm currently working right now, our developers utilize Azure DevOps. Now I would love to have some type of certification and understanding of DevOps because when I open it up, I have no idea what's happening. I would look to get some type of entry level certification in which I understand how this works and then keep it in my back pocket. As for me, I'm personally looking to get the AWS Cloud Practitioner certification. I think that could come in really handy as we evolve and take up more space in the cloud. I plan to get the ITIL because I want to stay in IT project management. I just love the software development lifecycle. I just want to be part of that system. I still need to do my research on the different softwares like Salesforce and ServiceNow and Azure DevOps. I need to still learn those a little more to see which one I would want to do because I don't want to be a developer. So if Azure DevOps is solely for developers, then maybe I just need like a crash course in understanding the fundamentals versus trying to go get a whole DevOps certification. But I do think 
I do think, I'm not gonna lie, I do think Salesforce is giving the same energy as AWS because I hear Salesforce everywhere. Like everyone utilizes Salesforce. I'm gonna have to probably pursue that. This year for sure, I know I'll have the AWS Cloud Practitioner. I need to do more research on the ITIL to see what are the requirements and see how I can create like a study plan in order to get that certification. And then next year for sure, I'm all in on Salesforce. What about y'all? What certifications do y'all currently have? What certifications are currently piquing your interest? That's all for this week's episode of Life as a Project Manager. Thank you for tuning in. As always, please drop comments comments, questions, and just anything you want to say in the comment section. Thank you for tuning in. As always, I appreciate you because you can be anywhere in the world, but right now you're with me watching this video. So thank you because we is locked in for life, okay? Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Lola the Manager. And of course, be sure to smash that subscribe button so you can be notified on when episode five drops. Until next time.